I'm about to show you a, a clip uh, from News One where you will see uh, Officer Brian Encenia, a uh, police officer out of Waller County, in his arrest of uh, Sandra Bland. If you're not aware, uh, the officer has been indicted uh, for uh, perjury, and he's basically being served up as a sacrificial lamb where he faces one year and a $4,000 fine uh, for perjury. He's also being fired, and there's a question of whether he can be rehired in Texas, which the answer, if he's convicted, is probably not. But California will take him in a heartbeat. Anyone familiar with uh, Daryl Gates, the um, Los Angeles uh, police uh, head, would systematically take any police officer who had done any type of duty in southern states like uh, Texas, Florida, and Louisiana, and basically hire them on the spot. He did this because he knew how uh, brutal uh, police officers from the South were towards black people, and he embraced it. Now, uh, my question here is, since the only thing that they charged him with was perjury, there were no excessive force charges or threatening under color of authority charges. What would have happened if he had told the truth, i.e. saying that he got her out of the car and arrested her because he was pissed off that uh, she answered him back? If that is true and he had written on uh, his report that uh, he was just uh, mad at her and created uh, a charge in order to arrest her, this man would have been able to walk away scot-free. Also, n now that uh, they are not going to indict any of the officers uh, at the uh, police uh, station where Sandra Bland died, why is there no information being given to the family since the investigation is over? Anyway, those are just a few questions. I'm going to play the uh, clip now so that uh, you can uh, See how it was covered by News One. Wow! Well, get out of the car! For a failure on signal, you're doing all of this for Get over there! Right, yeah. Yeah, let's take this to court. Let's do Go it. ahead! For a failure signal, yep. That is the video of Texas State Trooper Brian Insinia, who pulled over and arrested Sandra Bland last summer. Well, he said, talking in terms of describing what took place and how she actually behaved, well, he lied and he has now been indicted for perjury. Special Prosecutor Sean McDonald explained the decision. It was specifically that he, in his probable cause affidavit, stated that he removed her from the vehicle to conduct, to further conduct a safer traffic investigation, and the grand jury found that statement to be false. As a result, the perjury charge is a Class A misdemeanor with a possible penalty of one year in jail and a $4,000 fine. After the decision came down, the Texas Department of Public Safety said they would start the process to fire Insinia, who had been on administrative duty since the arrest. Of course, we all remember the Sandra Bland case uh, caused so much controversy because after she was arrested, uh, the family uh, was working to get her uh, bail money, which she actually died in jail. Uh, they ruled that she died of a homicide. The family still, though, contends that something took place in that jail that led to Sandra Bland's death. Joining us right now in an exclusive uh, discussion from Chicago is Sandra Bland's mother, Miss Geneva Reveal, as well as the family attorney, Cannon Lambert. Now, uh, Geneva, I want to start with you. I know you certainly preferred uh, to have this officer uh, and someone else uh, be indicted for, um, uh, for killing Sandra Bland, but uh, your thoughts about this perjury charge and them firing, firing, her as, uh, firing him as well. There you have it. Uh, Roland, good morning. Thank you for having us. Uh, I just want to say on the perjury charge, where are the real charges? Where are the charges for assault and battery? Where are the charges for the uh, uh, amount of force that was used here? Okay, you, you, you want me to get excited about a perjury charge when she's not the only one I'm sure that has lied here. 
okay? And so if you're going to indict the gentleman on the perjury charge for what you're saying that he perjured himself. Let's go back and take another few uh, moments and look at that tape and see what other items he should have been indicted for. Perjury? Okay, that, that's fine. That's an indictment. On the other side of indictment, you have conviction. Will he be convicted of it? And, of course, that's the question that so many folks uh, look at because there have been other cases where police officers have been indicted, but they've actually uh, been found not guilty. Uh, the, the Texas Department of Public Safety, they also said that they're going to start the process to fire him. Uh, do you believe that he uh, should be fired uh, as a state trooper and not allowed to be rehired, frankly, uh, in law enforcement anywhere else? I believe so. And here is my thought process on that. Here we have about a five and a half month out situation here where the gentleman has been on administrative leave with pay, okay? M my daughter is not on administrative leave. She is gone, okay? And so there should not be the ability to have another family have to suffer this kind of injustice at this man's hands. Okay, so yes, I totally believe that he should be fired and should not be able to work anywhere else where someone else's life is put in jeopardy based on his actions. Attorney Cannon Lambert, I've always contended that if an officer lies on a report, uh, that should lead to automatic firing. We saw what took place with Jason Van Dyke in the Laquan McDonald case uh, and the other officers who corroborated his testimony. Uh, we also saw the officer who shot and killed Walter Scott, uh, where what often happens is the public takes the word of a law enforcement official, they lie on those report in the reports, and it becomes, oh, that's what happened, and people accept it. Listen, we want to be able to believe the police because they are our protectors. When we're not in a position where we can believe the police, we don't have public trust and we don't have confidence in those who are supposed to protect us. The reality of it is, is that this man should have been terminated six months ago. There's nothing that magically happened that made it easier to determine that he should have been fired now. All of what they needed to see was right there and available to them from the outset. Also, uh, when we talk about, uh, it, it, folks remember, you know, we played the whole video on this show, uh, and uh, I remember him getting in the car, talking to a supervisor, and uh, in essence trying to come up with uh, a legal reason uh, as to why he pulled her over. You literally can hear the conversation. Well, that's what's so disturbing, right? There's acquiescence to this. Uh, by the other officer that's on the phone with him or on the, uh, the communications with him. They're in the process of trying to determine what they can charge her with. Well, the thing that's so concerning to me is that it's clear what he could have been charged with. Why wasn't he charged with assault? Why wasn't he charged with false arrest? That phantom kick that he suggests happened didn't happen. And so, and that was the predicate for the arrest. So he should have been charged with a whole host of things, but he just wasn't. Uh, That's the reason why the family, I think, has such difficulty feeling comfortable. Uh, Geneva, I want to go to you for a final comment. Um, when, when, you, when you think about this case and how it has, uh, how it has developed, um, we saw uh, the grand jury also choose uh, not to indict anyone who works in the jails. What is next for you and the family? What's next? Hopefully, we are uh, in the. Uh, we understand that uh, the grand jury states the uh, investigation is done on their end. So hopefully, we can get the information that has been withheld from us for the last five and a half months, going on six now, and do a thorough investigation as we've been trying to do from day one. Roland, my thought process is this: if it's the way that you say it is, and it happened the way you said it did. Why are we still waiting for you to produce what's evidentiary for us to just say, okay, this is the way it happened? Why so much pushback? So hopefully now we can move forward and do what it is we need to do. My daughter is gone and we have to get justice for her. And this is definitely not it. Geneva, Re Geneva Reed, Bill, uh, certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Ken Lambert, thank you very much as well. Thank, thank you, Rose.
All right, folks, right now I want to go to our panel. We have Ralph Chittams, Senior Vice Chairman of the D.C. GOP, Dr. Avis Jones DeWeaver, Leadership Strategist uh, as well. We also are joined by Paris Denard, uh, who is a Republican Communications Strategist, and Amber Phillips, Co-Director of Black. Uh, folks, here you have, again, uh, this officer lying on a report, uh, gets indicted. First of all, it's, it's rare that grand juries will actually even indict mm -hmm. as a result. I think the only way it happens in this case because they actually had a special prosecutor. Yeah, yeah that's true. And, but the sad thing is the family's exactly right. These are crumbs compared to what actually happened in this case. And what's particularly disturbing to me is, for example, the murderer of Tamir Rice was fired from his previous job, but he happened to pop up later in Cleveland and kill a child. Mm -hmm. Who's to say that this gentleman won't pop up somewhere else and once again lead to someone else's death? Mm -hmm. Well, you made a very good point in, in, in championing the cause of if you are convicted or if you do something as heinous as what this officer did, you should not be hired anywhere. I think the governor of Texas, I think the Texas legislature should pass some legislation, or even all police officers, the police units should police themselves and say, as, a, as an order of police, we want to stand up for the, for our, our, our union, and we want to say, you do something like this, you will not be a part of our group anymore. But that's clearly not going to happen, and it hasn't happened. Right now, we have countless examples where non-indictments have happened. It, if we keep looking to the police to police themselves, we will continue to be having this conversation. We need to have someone come in and say, when is enough en is enough? When are we going to set a standard that if people keep coming up dead in your custody, if people keep lying and arresting us, which that lie is what led her into jail, which is where she died. So what, and we're supposed to settle for perjury and her mother is supposed to settle for that? That's ridiculous. Well, why don't we, there should be a national clearinghouse for police officers. Absolutely. Where if you have been, you know, found guilty, convicted of a crime, you should not be allowed to be a police officer in any other jurisdiction. But they're not even being found guilty or, or convicted. unfit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. No, and I think that's reasonable because we don't want someone who's been declared unreasonable or unfit in one state simply to up and move and go someplace else. And these guys have probably got no counseling, no psychological help and so they're going to perpetuate the process right for this case you know unfortunately it's just a perjury charge hell no we we can't settle for that and that's what uh, he, he's basically saying there's no way we settle for just the perjury charge somebody needs to go after that guy for everything that he did and push the envelope <sighs> But at least we got that. I'm not saying it's enough, no. because it clearly isn't. But what this does show is that there is a pattern inside of that county of officers doing this. And unfortunately, the only thing that's, that this family is going to get out of this now is paid. Right. Well, first of all, also in the Wallen County there, they also have a problem letting black folks vote, too. So trust me, there's a long history there uh, in Wallen County where Prairie View A&M University is located. Folks, uh, So now, basically, they're going to try to sweep this under the rug and let that guy get off with one year that he's probably only going to serve three months if convicted and a $4,000 fine, of which he's probably only going to be fined 10% of that. This is just an example of when somebody's caught red-handed doing dirt, when it's a white police officer, even when caught red-handed, they don't face the same penalties that uh, an everyday citizen would or even a, a, a minority police officer would.